Good morrow, my hooligans and delinquents. As I hope you're all having a fantastic day. As I have this aggressively average content for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to review what the hell is going on in the crypto space. Because a lot has been occurring. And you need to be aware of what's going to happen next. First and foremost, I did put out a podcast yesterday with Waters Above Crypto, breaking down what's going to happen with XRP, what's going on with Bitcoin, the stock market, and generally speaking. I think it was an incredible collaboration you all should review. But now here, we see that the Bitcoin market has had numerous massive price drops during bull cycles. Here, this is a chart posted from Wolf of All Streets, showing the meanings and the corrections of all these different bull runs since 2017. Negative 41%, negative 38% pullback, negative 29%, 34%, 41%, 40% and 27%. These type of pullbacks are normal in the crypto space, and these are things you should be anticipating, as at the same time, $4.5 trillion asset manager Fidelity files S1 form for a spot Ethereum ETF with staking included. Something I am very aware of is that the XRP army hates Ether because of ETHgate. Because of Hinman, Clayton, Vitalik, Joe Lubin, the conflicts of interest and corruption, JP Morgan, and the fact that we had this lawsuit because Ethereum was trying to staple Ripple. But what you all need to understand is ETH isn't going away. Despite the fact that there are currently SEC investigations against them, that does not matter. BlackRock and Fidelity filing for Ethereum ETFs. Those aren't an accident. These are inevitable products. And ETH will go on a moon mission. A crypto game built on Ethereum has been hacked for $63 million recently though. And the reason I'm pointing both the bullish and bearish side of Ethereum is to let you know the objective truth of everything going on in every ecosystem. We need ETH to do well for all of crypto to do well. And I can't stress that enough. Now, we also had something massive occur as KuCoin is having its executive charged with Bank Secrecy Act and unlicensed money transmission offenses and conspiracy. This is important because a lot of people just brush past this headline and think, oh, this is nothing. Right now they are consolidating power. The same thing that happened with Binance is going to happen with KuCoin and other crypto exchanges. And what you will need to realize is we need to know what their next move is. They're consolidating banking power. All these small and medium sized banks like Signature, New York Community Bank, Silicon Valley Bank are going away. BOA and JP Morgan will be some of the only ones left standing. Same thing will happen with crypto exchanges. It's about consolidating power right now. And the next crisis that the financial markets will experience will have just that happen. Currently, we see Coinbase accusing the SEC of breaking the law. The SEC has been sanctioned in court. But the SEC continues to not give a damn. Recently, Ripple has been fighting the good fight. And we've been winning in court despite the fact that now the SEC wants $2 billion from Ripple. This will not be allowed. The judge is already not on the SEC side. And we all need to know where this goes next.
stories. The SEC is seeking a nearly $2 billion fine against Ripple. Last year, a federal judge found the issuer of XRP violated securities law by selling the token directly to institutions. Now the court has to issue a final judgment and decide how much Ripple has to pay for breaking the law. While the SEC says the judge should hand down a $1.95 billion penalty against the company. Ripple's chief legal officer posted on X that it would file a response to the proposed judgment next month. We should also note that while Ripple was found to have violated the law when it came to selling XRP to institutions, the judge said the crypto company didn't break the law when it sold to retail investors. Next. That's the harm. So we've had this lawsuit go on for years. We've had um, XRP delisted. We've lost access to our funds momentarily. Like we've gone through all these things as individuals because the SEC says some businesses could have got a better deal if Ripple would have done something different. Um, what a joke, dude, what a joke. Uh, but the SEC was also just hit with sanctions in the debt box case for their gross abuse of power and misrepresenting the evidence to the court and then has the audacity to tell this court, oh, hey, we need $2 billion from Ripple. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we begin to see the legal issues Ripple is still fighting, $2 billion is on the line. But I believe it's $2 billion Ripple will never even come close to paying. The SEC has lost all credibility in court. And that is a pipe dream. And ultimately, I think Ripple will only end up having to pay 50 to $100 million in legal fees in regards to this penalty. But now... I'm going to pivot your attention away to something extremely significant happening in crypto right now. As one of my favorite cryptos on the planet that I have been recommending since 25 cents, 30 cents, and 50 cents to every single one of you has been absolutely exploding, reaching a high price of approximately $2.80 just two days ago. Proppy is currently back under $2.00 doing a magnificent job but now i'm gonna point out to all of you a massive problem happening in the world right now but first i have to stress i'm so tired of people missing out on opportunities because they're too self-righteous i have an only fans at onlyfans.com slash the bearable bowl where i post absolute gems super power plays that will make you money but a lot of people don't subscribe because they lack faith well you lack faith plenty of people are thanking me making their ROI and I wonder if you're gonna end up really making it this time around as yet again I have found another gem that I think will perform fairly well this bull market are you going to subscribe and see it? The only reason I don't post it for free on YouTube is because it is high risk, high reward. And it is for my protection, as I could be wrong. But I don't try to be. This is so you know. It's behind an OnlyFans paywall, so that all you know the risks you're taking in these smaller cap old coins. But I do believe the juice will be worth the squeeze. Other plays like Proppy are waiting for you there. But in regards to why Proppy is so important on the world stage, their CEO Natalia stated it's time to rebuild the real estate system. As the consumers first fought the commission structure, and now they'll rise for the recording change. $400 million were lost in title fraud in 2023. And now people are going to realize the importance of having their deed on chain. As squatters rights are prevalent and taking advantage of real world homeowners. And watch as these criminals are absolutely destroying the wealth of hard-working Americans by stealing their homes with bullshit laws. 
Well, did you read the story about the guy? I think he's from <laughs> Venezuela. I had to make a move. He's telling yeah. people how to get over the border and then squat in houses and yeah. like how you'll just get yeah. like, you know, it's like they won't throw you out of their house. It's oh, not like yeah. where we're from. You can just get in the house yeah, and then you can stay there. Queens. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The so, lady got arrested yeah, she for got changing arrested. the locks on her own home. Uh-huh. And that then, to me is crazy. They're the also squatting. saying in New York, if you're in a house for 30 days, you legally that's become right. a tenant. Yep, that's right. If you get mail sent to the place in your name, it's yours. That is bananas. That is crazy. Dude, I love this story. I think it happened in, like, Seattle or Portland or something. This this guy was uh, at every, you know, march and rally, and he was, like, big Antifa and communism. And he met someone there, and the guy was like, hey, can I crash with you? And the guy was like, yeah, sure. So he brought him and his girlfriend and mm-hmm. stayed on the couch. And after two weeks, the guy wouldn't let the homeowner <laughs> into his own house, and he had to call the police, ah. which is, like, against their religion. <laughs> <laughs> and they are like, we don't know what to tell you. Holy shit. Shit. Yeah. Isn't that the best? Oh my god, that's hilarious. That's <laughs> but, amazing. I was talking to friends of mine. There there's like there's like over a thousand squatter situations in Atlanta. And they're like, Well, it's only a thousand. The population is this big. It doesn't really matter. I'm like, dude, ten people doing it is alarming. Yeah, a thousand is <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah. That means they know how to do it. They know the loophole. Yes. And you need to tighten that loophole up, you fuckheads. People are so smart. They know how to jock the system. A hundred percent, especially criminals and yeah. fraudsters, which is the type of person who's got, I mean, you imagine they're filming them. This is my house. Yeah. They're filming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, dude. This is where I live now. Uh-huh. And they know that you have to pay them to get out. And that's what a lot of p- homeowners do. But the problem is then another person is just going to jump in. Well, and the eviction process is so long and you have to hire a lawyer. Yeah. You have to go to court. And then it's then all it on the homeowner. And good yeah. luck trying to sell the place because if you're not there in the house, they'll just squat. But they always hold up like a dirty piece of paper. I have a lease. And it's just like like a happy face <laughs> and a house crayon. behind it. Yeah. This guy was explaining how he did it. This guy was explaining how he did it in this YouTube video. He was saying that he you get a fake lease. Mm-hmm. So you draft, out, draft up a fake lease. You use that lease to get the power and things turn in your name. You pay the bill. Like there's a bunch of different steps that you can do that just seems to indicate that you are the legal resident, right. and then they have to take you to court. And it could be months and months Years. before you even get a trial. Yeah. And where do they stay? The homeowners. They're fucked in a migrant They're hotel. Fucked. The, cra- the uh, it's so crazy that in the name of protecting tenants, which is important, you yep. don't want a shitty landlord. You want to yeah. protect tenants, mm-hmm. but in the name of protecting tenants, you're you're basically allowing people to steal people's houses. A 97-year-old man is in jail for refusing to leave his home. He claims someone stole it from him. You can see the family's belongings all over the yard now, and they reached out to Clark Howard's Consumer Action Center for help. Investigative reporter Ashley Lincoln is live outside the home in DeKalb County. Ashley, this just does not make sense, but real estate attorneys say this type of theft is on the rise. Sad to say it is, Linda. I mean, this family, they've been out here all day trying to salvage whatever they can. And we're talking about more than 20 years worth of items on their lawn. They're trying to stuff it in this U-Haul truck. Now, housing advocates say this type of theft is easy because courts don't require people to show ID when modifying this type of paperwork. This guy just come out of nowhere saying he purchased a home and just took a home. It's a tactic real estate attorneys say they're starting to see all too often. It's not fair. Attorney Richard Olympic says they're called wrongful foreclosures or forged deeds. It's when thieves use forged documents to gain ownership of unaware homeowners' properties. There's no people's court for challenging a wrongful foreclosure or, or forged deed. So that's the fundamental problem. I just can't believe that this is happening. Shami Alman says she and her 77-year-old husband were forced out of their Stone Mountain home of more than 20 years. I don't know how to feel right now. I'm just scared. Allman's 77-year-old husband was arrested for refusing to leave the property. Very upsetting to see my husband in handcuffs at 77 years old and placed in the car because he didn't want to leave his home. She says she and her husband began getting letters in the mail saying they took out a second mortgage, something she says neither of them did. We don't have no more mortgage. And by Tuesday, this man told him he was the owner and purchased the home from a foreclosure. Hey, it's Ashley with Channel 2 News. The current owner ran inside after spotting our camera and wouldn't answer any of my questions. He eventually did come out. Can you answer our questions? No questions. You get out. Do you own the property? Get out. How did you acquire this property? A 
Alembic says it's not uncommon for judges to rule against homeowners even after proving a wrongful foreclosure. It's a big problem nowadays because of the fact that e-filing is so e-recording of deeds is so easy now that it's very easy to record forged deeds. He says this is due to outdated state law resulting in limited abilities within the magistrate system involving dispossessory hearings. It's designed to just make dispossessories efficient, uh, not necessarily fair. And the couple says they did file for bankruptcy because they thought it would protect their property. Advocates say, hey, if you're in situations like this, the best thing to do is to contact an attorney because this type of law is very difficult to navigate on your own. In the meantime, Mrs. Allman says she has nowhere to go and will have to sleep in her car tonight. Reporting live in Stone Mountain, Ashley Lincoln, Channel 2 Action News. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to understand that as everything is going on in the mainstream, we're absolutely printing profits behind the scenes because we're invested in cryptos and technology that will absolutely get adopted and will fix a lot of real world problems. At the same time, XRP is a laggard and likes to move last. But the more and more we see these type of articles on Forbes, which are absolute hit pieces on XRP, I get more bullish. When mainstream media is bearish on our digital asset, we understand what we hold. I told you that $2 billion is on the table for Ripple to pay. The mainstream reported on it. In addition... While the rest of the crypto market is in the optimism and belief phase, XRP remains behind in the disbelief phase, making it one of the most investable digital assets in the world right now. And one of my favorite indicators is the XRP Bitcoin chart, showing XRP completely bottoming out versus Bitcoin, meaning an uptrend is very likely... And you see, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I made these 100 reasons why XRP will hit new all-time highs in 2024 into a three-hour-long video is so I can constantly always refer back to it because this is all the belief you need to know we're going to new all-time highs this year. And reason number 26 shows a chart showing similar price behavior that XRP exhibited in 2017. And not only did I show it in that video, but one of the best chart analysts in crypto, Credible Crypto, showed the exact same thing that I discussed in that video. I posted this in my last video. And I hope all of you take the time to, at the very least, refer to that 100 Reasons Why video, as it is my greatest piece of work. And it'll make any doubt you have subside into oblivion this is the greatest show on earth and the xrp army will be remembered and written about in the history books finally at the wave of innovation gold coast conference bc backer presented this specific chart Showing how while well Bitcoin went on a full-blown bull run, XRP was down 50% over several months before XRP inevitably exploded. We are in perfect position. And as we wait on XRP, we'll be rotating profits from other altcoins to top off our XRP bags and make generational wealth unlike anyone has ever seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video.